Uh, so everybody's talking about climate change nowadays, right? Who killed Hannibal? This is the Great Barrier Reef. It is dying. In the summer of 2016, an invisible fire cut across the reef. This majestic place was overcome by decay, with the corals that have served as home for marine life since the beginning of recorded memory bleached white by the boiling waters that encircled them. In consequence, huge swathes of the reef were transformed irreparably. Its northern third, previously its most immaculate section, lost more than half of its coral. Though the coral was able to recover to some degree in the autumn, spring and winter, the summer of 2017 saw the liquid flames return. This time, they hit the reef's middle third. The result of these back-to-back -back bleaching events was catastrophic. In 2015, the reef was home to two billion corals. Three years later, half of them had died. The brutal death of the Great Barrier Reef has not been brought about by a freak occurrence. The cause of the hot waters which suffocated half of its beautiful, irreplaceable corals was not the anger of gods, nor a temporary fluctuation in the Earth's environment. They were brought about by human-created climate change. In the process of developing their analysis of capitalist society, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels recognised a peculiar feature of the development of capitalism. The immense technological and productive advances brought about by capitalist industry did not only produce an increase in the wealth of humanity, but an impoverishment and destruction of nature. In his book, The Dialectics of Nature, Engels formulated this into a clear theoretical principle. He wrote, Let us not, however, flatter ourselves overmuch on account of our human conquest over nature, for each such conquest takes its revenge on us. This was in 1883. Today, the immense growth of capitalist industry under imperialism has heightened this contradiction to an apocalyptic scale. A UN report issued on the 8th of October highlighted the scale and immediacy of this problem clearly. At our present rate of pollution, we will see a temperature rise of 2.7 degrees above pre-industrial levels by 2040. This will lead to environmental catastrophe across the sphere of the globe. In other words, we have but 12 years left before the environmental crisis grows to such a scale that it could very well lead to human extinction. The report argues that to prevent this will require changing the world economy at a scale and speed that had no documented historical precedent. Greenhouse gas pollution must be reduced 45% from its 2010 level by 2030 and eliminated entirely by 2050. Many critiques of global warming suggest that the problem is rooted in consumption. In other words, they argue that global warming is down to individuals, and that each of us has a responsibility to manage our own carbon footprint by recycling, using less electricity and water, or driving less. Whilst doing these things is by no means a bad suggestion, this fundamentally fails to get to the heart of the problem. Take for example recycling. Whilst in theory, this process could scale back plastic pollution of the soil and the ocean, or even offset the impact of producing plastic, reality tells a different story. In the August of 2018, 
Councils in Britain revealed that two-thirds of the plastic they receive is unrecyclable, with particularly black plastic being all but impossible to recycle. As such, the intent of individual consumers does not matter here, whether they recycle or not. The statistics suggest that at least two-thirds of plastics in Britain necessarily go to landfill. It is clear, therefore, the critiques focusing upon the individual cannot solve the question as it confronts us. What is required is a systemic approach. Climate change is both caused and driven by the organisation of production under capitalism, with just 100 companies responsible for 71% of global greenhouse gas emissions. These industries hold enormous influence and power, which makes tackling the pollution resultant from their actions essentially impossible under capitalism. An example of this can be seen in the responses offered to the 8th of October UN report on climate change. The report's conclusion that coal use must be eliminated was immediately disputed by the World Coal Association, with its interim chief executive, Katie Warwick, stating that it will continue to campaign for the use of carbon capture technology to allow the continued use of coal. Rather than preventing climate change, this technology is intended to reverse its impact, lowering temperatures once they have passed the 2.7 degree threshold. Dr Drew Schindel, one of the UN report's authors, stated that this option is preferred by governments, despite the fact that it would lead to the death of all coral reefs on the planet, shortly after the report's release. That capitalism is fundamentally unable to resolve the environmental crisis is because it necessarily organises production exclusively in the pursuit of private profit. As Marx understood, profit is derived from the exploitation of human labour power, the only commodity capable of producing new value. As renewable energy sources only require labour power in the construction of solar panels, wind turbines or wave energy technology, they do not produce new value in the long term and as such they are not profitable. In contrast, carbon energy sources require labour power to acquire through mining, drilling or fracking and more labour power to process. They are profitable. As such, the logic of capitalist production dictates that renewable energy sources do not receive masses of investment, whereas fossil fuels and carbon producing energy sources are worth billions. Not only is capitalism unable to solve the problem of climate change, the reaction and terror brought about by its crisis is significantly deepening the problem. This is indicated by the US's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accords on the 1st of June 2017. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord Thank you. Though the accords are by no means sufficient, a point well acknowledged within scientific literature, Trump's decision to withdraw from the agreement signifies that he will not allow the profitability of US imperialism to be curved even to an insignificant degree. The construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, the beginning of fracking in Britain, and the intent of the newly elected US-backed fascist president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, to privatise the Amazon rainforest indicate much the same process. Resistance to this rampant exploitation of the earth is everywhere met by the iron fist of the capitalist state something clearly indicated by the US response to protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline and the British response to demonstrations against fracking. Rather than address the problem of climate change, imperialist society is seeking to deepen its exploitation of the earth. Profit comes first, no matter its demands. Though this in itself is enough to bury our species, the tendency toward war analysed throughout the rest of this film must also be acknowledged. War between any of the nations discussed in this film today quite literally means doom for our ecosystem. 
Aside from the more evident implications of direct confrontation, even the continuation of proxy wars threatens to dramatically speed up the environmental crisis. This is obvious from a simple observation. The US military is the largest polluter on the face of the earth. As it further builds its forces and those it threatens are forced to do the same, this pollution will only increase. The implications for our planet are staggering. Though the UN report cited here marks clearly the scale of the problem facing our species, it fails to communicate precisely the extent of capitalist production's impact upon the natural world. For every moment that we allow imperialist capitalism to continue, our planet is impoverished, losing some of the light of its splendour. If the agonising death of the Great Barrier Reef serves as one example of this, we must know that there are many, many others.